Beautiful. I love, I said this last time, but I love hearing all of your voices. Welcome to the Time for All Ages. And again, if you are on the youth side and you want to imagine coming to the front of the sanctuary with me, um, please do. I missed that part. Um, but this is for everyone. So our service today is called Baby, We Need a Barn Raising. So for any kids here who might not know what a barn raising is, I want to talk a little bit about that. And then I understand that we had an example of a barn raising in this community yesterday, and I want to celebrate that a little bit. So a barn raising was also called a raising bee or a rearing in the United Kingdom, where some of my family that I'm, I'm family reunioning with, if I may use that as a verb, um, are from. And it's a collective action of the community, people coming together to build a barn or rebuild one that was in need of repair. And it was most common in the 18th and 19th century in rural North America. Maybe some of your ancestors were part of one. Maybe even are still connected to cultures that do this today. The Amish and Old Order Mennonite communities do this, particularly in Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, and some rural parts of Canada. So if you can imagine all of these people coming together to build this barn together. And this is a large and costly building and super important to the community, right? This farm community really needs this barn. And one family or one person certainly couldn't do it together. And they didn't have the modern machinery that we're used to building with today. So all the members come together unpaid to assist in putting their neighbor's barns up. And because each member could ask the others for help, there was never concern really about what we call reciprocity or, you know, um, making sure that, that everyone did something for everyone else because it was just understood that this is what community does. Now, um, in the olden times, there was an understanding that the men would build the barn, the women would cook, and the children would play. Um, I like to imagine a barn raising today where people of all genders can choose the role that is right for them. Um, but another idea of barn raising that I've come to love is just the idea of people coming together in community to do something to support each other. So yesterday in this community, and many of you already know about this, but I want to celebrate it. Um, one of the connections groups led an effort to help um, Alex and Liz, new members of this church. I don't know if Alex and Liz are here today. I can't see the whole gallery, um, but move into a new apartment as they're expecting a baby. So I talked to Greg McDonald a little bit about this last night to hear how it went. Um, for those of you who don't know, the connections groups are what uh, I think another term for small group ministry, which is one of my favorite kinds of ministry. And I'll tell you about that in a little bit, but they're meeting once a week over Zoom a small group of people getting to know each other more deeply. And certainly in COVID times, I bet that was cherished even more than usual. Um, and so they get to know each other, they support each other. Um, there were losses in the group of, of people's family members and they were there for each other in those deaths. Um, and then here's this joyful news that Alex and Liz are expecting a baby and that they have a new apartment. And so um, the Connections Group gathered folks to help out. Um, I heard from Rusty that um, Rusty went over there um, mid-morning after um, a, a vigil or a press that you all regularly have. And by then the work was practically already done um, because like with a barn raising, when you have a lot of people, the work goes fast and goes well. This is what Greg said that really stuck in my heart yesterday about this experience of helping Alex and Liz move. He wrote, connection was the key and love was the driving force. Connection was the key and love was the driving force. Put that on a shirt, on a tattoo, on a billboard. What an incredible way to describe anything. Let that be our guide in all that we do. Connection as the key, love as the driving force. And then this, this effort rippled, right? 
Um, I'm told that Liz's father and Liz's family was so moved by all of the support from the church, Liz's father offered to help with Spanish translation for someone who may come to live in sanctuary at your church. Um, there are ripple effects of this kind of incredible connection and love and kindness. So I want to celebrate that. That's going to be a bit the topic of our sermon today, and you're already doing it. So the last thing I want to tell you is also that this is a kind of community ministry. So community ministry is what I do. It's um, taking the work of the church beyond the church walls. And the Unitarian Universalist Society for Community Ministry says, we believe that only through many diverse forms of ministry can we heal the broken, create justice, and live in harmony with the spirit of life. We hold a vision of a larger ministry that sees the world as its parish. And that's what you do when you go out to these uh, to a Black Lives Matter protest or to help somebody move. And for the kids here, that is a lot of what RE, religious education, children's chapel, the children's work is. It's these small groups of people who get together and connect. And so I want to encourage the kids in this congregation to keep bringing the kind of church that you love, even as you get older, keep reminding the adults of what is special about pe being part of a small group or a class or going to church with friends. I think that's something that the kids can really help the adults remember. So thank you for all the ways that you are connecting and that you are using love as a driving force. This has been our time for all ages. <laughs>